Hi all. You may have heard the news that Netflix is being sued for something. Nona Gabrindvashvili, excuse the pronunciation, a Georgian chess player who was actually from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, became the Women's World Chess Champion in 1962. And she actually played many of the greatest players, male players in history, as well as, of course, all the top uh, women's players. She has played Tao, Vichy Anand, Paul Kerez, and the list goes on. Check out my blog link for more details about those games, which which is in the description of the video and in the pinned comment. So this particular game, looking at other games, she has some real amazing, brilliant games. Uh, so this one is against a Georgian champion, in fact. Alexander Blagids was Georgian champion in 1950, 1953 and 1957. So awarded the Soviet Master of Sports title in 1961. So Nonna, for short, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Played e4, and after c5, the Sicilian defence, knight c3, knight c6. So Alexander plays knight c6. So f4, g6, bishop b5. So this is slightly unusual. This is a kind of Grand Prix attack, and the bishop. You know, can sometimes play to bishop, you know, c4. I've played that quite a bit, Grand Prix attack. It's a lot of fun, but this is also a real nuisance way of playing things for black. So again, I'm glad to move that knight to d4, but it's actually a bit of a target there after bishop g7, knight g e2, e6, and now the knight is taken, c takes knight e2, and now queen h4, check. And now there's a very, very practical decision made here in this position. None have played knight g3 sacrificing a pawn this gives a very dynamic aggressive game if g3 this weakens the light squares a bit and maybe black plays queen h5 and for example if white castles now then knight f6 is a bit unpleasant for example this and then further pawn moves more pawn weaknesses and there's even things like g5 it looks a little bit as though black's getting into the driving seat with an advantage quite a big positional advantage and you know later this this light square bishop could head for this diagonal uh you know across here across these weaknesses so this is a very dynamic decision play to sacrifice a pawn so we have queen takes f4 and it seems after d3 queen c7 black's pretty solid the bishop's like being blunted by you know this pawn structure we see white castling knight e7 but here things take a real a really brilliant turn of events starting with bishop g5. This prompts black to play knight c6, which might actually be the first little mistake. If d6, queen d2, knight c6, this is a little bit better version of things. But in the game with knight c6, guess you know for 100 points what Nonna plays here. So a really, really great move, which really causes trouble now for black. Okay, I'm about to reveal Knight h5. This is a move I like to play sometimes, of course. It's it's a really very, very interesting move. And you might not understand well, exactly why, what's going on. If black dares to castle now, then we can snap off the Fianchetto bishop and exploit the dark square weaknesses. You know, we're going to pounce into h6 now. And this is going to be crushing. There's nothing defending, you know, against such, you know, dark square attack. And, okay, so that would be, you know, kind of crushing. And you might think, well, what about f6? Doesn't really help. Rook takes f6. The damage is done there. And, you know, black's king is really unsafe here in this position. There's also, like, disconnection issues for the black position. So, you know, the black king is going to get mated pretty soon. For example, like this. So we have the knight sacrifice being accepted. And now the brilliant continuation for 100 points. What do you think white plays here? Okay. Rook takes f7. Yes, this is really, really fantastic, this move. If queen takes h5, then knight e5. And that safely defends things. Black would have a big advantage there. 
Platt's getting in the driving seat there. But Rook takes F7, prevents Platt castling, rips open this diagonal. We have Queen E5. Black's last chance here that the only move it seems is H6. And if Bishop H4, this position, for example, it seems Black is surviving there. So White has to play in a kind of different manner if H6 has been played with Bishop F4. And here Bishop E5, Queen takes H5, and maybe White needs to be accepting a perpetual kind of scenario, a perpetual attack scenario like this. So, okay, so h6 though wasn't played. We have queen e5, and now the final brilliant touch to this game for 200 points. What would you play here with white? Okay, a really important tempo gaining, crushing move, rook f5, gaining a tempo off the queen. So queen takes h5 is now on the cards, and we've got a kind of complementary bishop and queen. On the attack here so and also the bishop is going to be liberated if e takes so this is actually the game end that resigned if for example e takes then queen takes h5 is check and then it's going to be mate on f7 because it opened up that light square bishop killer comma square on f7 if yeah what is what is what happens here you know if Queen takes f5 is the best that's not very good losing the Queen why well, it's just absolutely crushing it here it's crushing position yeah so Rook f5 is really quite crushing also you know Queen takes h5 it would allow Queen takes g5 technically so that's that makes you know it's a much better version of events not to give black any material but uh, you know, even here, of course, Black's having a really hard time with best play. White's attack is very, very strong in these scenarios. For example, like this, this is just one example where there's resources like this. For example, so the queen can be very, very dangerous. But rook f5, really incisive, incisive final move to this game. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this game. Really, really amazing player. Nona Gabrind Ashvli, excuse the pronunciation. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, there, there, are, there is a great pronunciation site for all of these names on uh, Pronounce Wiki. I'll give a link in the description, actually. So, yeah, it hit the BBC News site this story that, um, unfortunately, Netflix in the series uh, used her real name and kind of alluded as though she hadn't played men maybe they meant in a certain context or something but it was different from the book so you you can see the information a little bit in the blog post with the relevant links to the BBC news article uh, so it was on the front page of the BBC news uh, yesterday and I do feel like I've kind of underrepresented women's players women champions on this channel actually there are quite a few women's world champions i i probably haven't covered many games at all if you know if any so i'm hoping maybe to make some amends there uh, so i hope this video is a good start you know maybe have a new kind of playlist celebrating you know women's chess more and i've certainly been thrashed by many many girl and women players in my time like natasha regan harriet hunt and the list goes on <laughs> so you know I I have no misunderstanding that I can be easily crushed by women players and I think it's unfortunate that the fictional character of Beth Harmon did there was actually kind of a real Beth Harmon and it seems that the credibility of the fictional character was at the expense of a real person with real achievements who did real breakthroughs and played even two or three like world chess champions basically who later became world chess champions or world champions at the time she was a very very good friend it seems of Mikhail Tao who I'm studying in at the moment and had fun things to say about Tao and you know drew with such great players on occasion as well as crushing many other players in dramatic ways like this game 
so even the Georgian champion so I hope you enjoyed uh, this little game example quite crushing I felt a true Kings crusher okay and by the way check out my courses I'm really getting into courses so I'm, there is a course coming out on Mikhail Tal within the next few days I hope so and that's that's also an interesting angle I, I had on on this news item that actually Mikhail Tal was one of her favorite players and one of the nicest players on the circuit it seemed so anyway check out my courses Kings Crusher TV slash chess courses to see what I'm up to there I hope you check them out anyway so um yeah comments questions like share subscribes all appreciated as well thanks very much